A good evening to you all. Today is the 23rd of January 2020 and this is the New Vision Bulletin. We are going to begin with the headlines. What's making headlines? In the headlines today, the outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Uganda, Deborah Malik, bid fell to Uganda. The desert locusts will be sprayed with chemicals if they invade Uganda. Prime Minister Hakana Ruguna informs the meeting attended by ministers, technical officers and different ministries. In a special report today, we continue to talk to Matayo Biamunogo about the bush war and how it happened at Birembo village. And from local sport, Vipers head coach has been sacked. This and more in the main bulletin. Welcome back from that. Today is the 23rd of January, 2020. My name is Nagira Leila. This is the news in detail. Desert locusts will be sprayed. Re reports from Kenya indicate that locusts have now reached the Samburu and Trukana areas, which are close to the Uganda-Kenya border. Trukana is about 166 kilometers from Karamoja, meaning the locusts can reach Uganda in less than two days. In the press conference held today at the office of the president in Kampala, the Prime Minister Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda stressed that desert locusts will be sprayed with chemicals if they evade Uganda. Gerald Tenua attended the conference and has a report. Locusts can cover as much as 150 kilometers a day and the swamp can destroy crops sufficient to feed 2,500 people for a year, according to the United Nations. Speaking at the press conference convened by the Office of the Prime Minister, at the Office of the President, the Prime Minister, Dr. Hakana Rugunda, said the desert locusts will be sprayed with chemicals if they invade Uganda, and this was in the meeting attended by ministers, technical officers from different ministries. Rugunda said widely accepted chemicals were going to be used in case of an invasion. He said they need eight planes and that four will be provided by a desert locust organization and that they were going to use funding from government to service them to ensure that they are ready to combat the locusts. The money will also be used to procure fuel and chemicals. He also said a team of 2,000 soldiers as well as 1,000 policemen and 400 extension workers have been mobilized to work against the locust invasion. The team will be deployed in parts of northeastern Uganda, Teso, Bugiso and Kitigum that are currently facing the risk of invasion. This will be done after training. The 1,000 policemen have benefited from previous training. Rugunda said Uganda is working on a strategy to thwart the invasion by the locusts. He added that this requires them to work closely with their counterparts in Kenya. The ministers included Vincent Sempija, the Minister of Culture, Hilary Onek, the Minister of Disaster Preparedness, Matia Kasaija, the Minister of Finance, Moses Kizige, State Minister for Karamoja Affairs, and Eli Tumine, the Minister of Security. The press conference was convened for Rugunda to comment on the state of preparedness and the threat invasion as well as the control measures. He said that by October 2019, the desert locusts were in parts of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia and Sudan, where they were building up, and that is very worrying. The desert locusts invaded the northeastern part of Kenya on December 28th, and they have spread in four swarms into 10 counties. <laughs> According to Vincent Sempiger, the Minister of Agriculture, the desert locusts are swarming towards Uganda in two swarms, namely the one of Baringo and the other has moved through Sambaru, which has reached to Kana. The desert locusts are about 300 kilometers away from the border of Karamoja, which is sitting in the northeastern part of the country. The Prime Minister did not mention the amount of money that is needed to fight the locust invasion, but pointed out that the government considers the fight against the locusts as a priority. He said that whatever amount of money is needed will be provided to take the fight to the locusts. The Minister of Finance, Matia Kasaja, said the invasion of the locusts was an attack on the livelihoods of Ugandans and a drawback to the economy. He said he was going to mobilize funding to ensure that the strategies of government to fight the locusts are rolled on the ground. Sempija said Area spraying and hand spraying will be encouraged, but precautions will be taken to safeguard human population as well as the village wells, which are sources of drinking water. 
Musa Cheru, the State Minister for Disaster Preparedness in the Office of the Prime Minister, said the areas in northeastern Uganda that have been hit by floods and waterlogging were likely to be hit by the locusts. He said they were dealing with people who have either been displaced by landslides or affected by landslides and they will not lose focus because of the threat of the evasion by the locusts. Eli Tumine, the security minister, said the population should be aware. He said what is important is coordination and everybody should take the threat as real. Tumine also warned that the desert locusts moving according to weather changes and changing climate, the threat may persist until June. However, the minister for Karamoja, Kizige, said Karamoja receives very little rain and it is headed for harsh period of a prolonged dry spell. He also warned the population that is selling their food at giver prices to South Sudan and Northern Kenya to stop. He said available food should be used sparingly because the locust invasion is likely to be followed by a shortage of food. The desert locust is among the most dangerous migratory pests in the world. A one kilometer two swarm can consume the equivalent of food for 35,000 people in one day. The story was compiled by Gerald Tenua for New Vision TV. Thank you so much, Gerald Tenua. Malak bid farewell to Uganda. The outgoing U.S. ambassador to Uganda, Deborah Malak, is not only leaving Uganda, but is also retiring from the U.S. diplomatic service after 39 years of public service. We have a report. Malak, who has been in Uganda for the last four years, is leaving Uganda this week following the expiry of her tenure. The departing U.S. ambassador to Uganda bid farewell to Uganda at a press conference which was at the American Center in Kabbalagala. She says she will miss the part of Africa a great deal. She said, I quote, I am not just leaving Uganda at the end of my assignment, but I'm retiring from diplomatic service after almost 39 years of public service. It is time for me to go and do something else, but I can assure you that I'll continue watching what is in Uganda. In her farewell speech to the ministry officials led by the minister, Dr. Jane Ruther Cheng, Malak said she does not have immediate plans on what to do during retirement, but is looking forward to spending time with her grandchild and 91-year-old mother. She said she's also considering coming back to Uganda in the future as a tourist. Malak added, I quote, I have enjoyed and appreciated my time here in Uganda in many ways. She stated, saying she has spent much of her professional life serving in various parts of Africa, including Central, Western, and Southern Africa. She said she'd never dreamt of serving in East Africa until 2005 when her boss is at the African Bureau in the State Department on a agriculture trade issue made her the Deputy Director East Africa. She said though she was skeptical at the beginning, she's glad they pushed her to the eastern part of Africa. Deborah Marx stretched, I do believe in the continent's potential and have believed more strongly for almost 40 years that there's so much more that can be achieved on this continent because I have had the opportunity to meet dynamic, energetic and talented Africans, not just in Uganda, but across the continent. There's so much that is possible and whatever I can do to help realize some of that possibility, I know that will continue to be a big part of my life in some different capacities as they go forward. Let's go in for a short commercial break. We return shortly. Welcome back from that commercial break. Let's see what's trending in the business world. In business tonight, local entrepreneurs and small business operators in the country want the government to financially support them so as to grow their businesses. Under the Umbrella Organization, the Federation of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Uganda, want the government to increase and continue supporting them in developing their businesses. The remarks were made by the association chairperson, John Walugembe, during a press briefing at their offices in Nakawa. SMEs expect a slowdown in access to private sector credit in that period, uh, and some of them attribute this to domestic borrowing by government, which grabs out the private sector. So as government, as government's priorities increase, as government borrows more from the domestic market, grabs out the private sector, and ultimately, uh, 
will translate into higher interest rates. Um, so SMEs in the retail and wholesale sector were the least optimistic on borrowing costs, while those in agriculture were the most optimistic. I don't know why those in agriculture are the most optimistic about lending rates. Maybe it's because of the different guarantee schemes that government and other donors have put in place, but that is the result. Well, can we pleaded with government to continue assisting them as it does international investors since they also contribute to the economic growth of the country. Some sectors have been really uh, hit hard by the hard economic times and it's true that some businesses close. Now, the reason we give this mood meter is to go and tell government, look, this is what people feel. Uh, how can we ensure that maybe in the next quarter or in the budget or whatever, you try to address uh, these issues. So we didn't have a parameter on that, but I would imagine that when things are hard, if you find that businesses are negative, overly, uh, overly pessimistic, then it may be an indicator that some will be about to close. Statistically, the 2019 Global Entrepreneurship Monitor Report ranked Uganda as a country with the highest youth entrepreneurs, with 55.6% of youth population involved in new or established businesses. In the special report, we're going to look at Biamunungu's NRA bushwalk story of Birembo. As we approach the NRA government celebrations, New Vision TV continues to unfold the different series of the untold stories of the Bush War. In the second series, Biamunungu, who was on site at Birembo, narrates how the president survived death on that spot, but instead he had to lose his bodyguard. Barbara Nyamwiza visited that very spot and she managed to hold an interview with Matayo Yamunungu, who is now 61 years old. It was on the 10th of January 1985 that President Chairman Seveni, together with his bodyguard and four other people, were at this very spot in Mirembo village and resting, relaxing, as they awaited food to be served to them as they partook their journey to liberate this country. At this very spot, the soldiers to Obote got to shoot at the president and his bodyguard. Unfortunately, the bodyguard lost his life right here and is buried at this very spot. President Sherry Museveni had to go on after burying his friend and partake the other part of the journey and the struggle, as we shall hear from Matayo Biamnugu, who was here on that very day, and he narrates and recounts to us the events around this very day and this very sport in our series. Let's have what he says. He is in his native Runyoro Chitara language, and we shall have to get a bit and two or three or four of what he recounts of this place. Yiwo <laughs> Enkoto President <laughs> Akaba muntu owo mutima murungi kula ndi Uganda agirwanirira kandi mba yakarabaga tibachuraga ati bakora gachi na ite kantu wachizwa gabo bote ndiboni batulemesa irabo bayizira oba maze kulale na kumwenda na kuikumi bayizira bakanga bayika kisa kisaye bayiyo ramukubano gamba ngeze na bantu bange abani mugende goku 
Umuntu waitu umfrizi tuna kaba baina mpira. Bali wataka nukondoza. Hapa sika zibataka kutandika wabaku kutan kaba yekira. Tuna kutela kapira kawa. Hapa sika ya baro uruwa. Hii wapura wapura ima rao bilim wawo nya iso mirao. Sawa zikani zika saa muenda wa katandika kapira kawa. Sawa nka iku mimuli zitandika. Iku gambirega. Yabaya uwe njo gero. Nkote. Nkoto. Yotu wajiulega nguwe kubategeta. Ya duduma. Ya 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 du 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 du. Baka suka kutera bale ba pula ima la iso mirom kisari. Hati mukamo ya hii ambao echi mundu chika kuwata iso mirom. Chika tera ofisi ya primary. Baka gila kubaba tehile bando baku nuobo. Baka tera kisika cha hii ofisi yonka. E mundu chika kitehile. Baka amba tutuwa itutuwa kuwasiri. Bwa gamba katuba teri bali yura bali mkisani baba ruwa kuli ndoza wa hapo vyomba vya avu ndoza. Hati chiba wakuzi ni batera nka kutera bu. Pande kaguruka guruka hapa silikale wa hitu hapa kutifunga hati hapa wa hitagawa yekele. Ere mundu weje nkote katera ya gomba iso gavu. E kari mechi ina wabugazi chiku ichi ya wabugaza nukoko nukoro hoti. E yadi isatu mita nka isatu nakunu isatu. Baka hawa baikira anuwa baiki uwa izire ira. Aizile kuwasere review. Aizile kuwasere review kule muasenga wange. Napo gamba wina anginyo hati nkalimira chumuka mawa wina agamba kuyamba mwini. Napo wivito kini vate mawo, ni varula muhogo, ni tumbahwa, viimba. Aba sirikali vali ukumanya wali wali mwenjara ni varuma. Senga wanga kapa na chumbe viimba. Ila vuli, ba chumbe wako mbunaga. Uwaitu wili, evintu, evi ila vuli ngeri vya vaile mtu. Baka musavane haa. Nebi imbe biji jirevenu, mbutu wafu enjara. Era aja kuya di, no mkuru unawa kichimaji na yoko unwe, umbi imbe unawa kabawano kuye vi imbe, president ya roa vile vile vile. Ba chumbira gawo mchifakede, mchifenese echi yo, uwaya nkubukono gamba, uwa ikali ya vihugu ila ikali ya nkaa mutomo, mutomo kwa waguli ya anu, bali nka ikali ya anu. Era anu, asinzao muno 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 na wakulu wava izire, abo ole chengeye vale ikali ile, nesiko otiwe. Baku chumba, baku mazee kuwata, baku waika lila amutomba wa murandira. Nesiko otiba waika lila, kwa waika lila umuntu mkulu kubo waika lila. Baka waika lila umurandira kwa baguli guti. Hati, kwa baguli guti guru gila umuntu wa maguli kuli. Hati, presenta waika lila watu wa kutufuga wa yanga witu wa wabide munu. Haika lila nka sadi za wa wa wa. Nesiko ota waika lila nka kula kisika. Omuto magu nukaba gukuzi guli gwa amani nyonka zaro nyagusanga senganu ya gusimbira ogole jina na makogo The series are going on and we are telling you the untold stories of the NRM's liberation war Matayo Biamnugo narrated to us in our first episode and we bring you much more as we go on Thank you so much, Barbara Yamwiza, about that special report on the Bush War. Back to news around Kampala. Basaja Balaba's shillings, 169 billion case postponed indefinitely. After appearing before the Supreme Court five times today, the judgment of the case in which Legal Brain Trust, in which Legal Brain Trust six orders compelling city tycoon Hassan Basaja Balaba to refund shillings 169 billion meant for the market contract has been adjourned indefinitely. Michael Odeng and Barbara Kavahumuza have a report. The judgment of a case in which Legal Brains trust six orders compelling city tycoon Hassan Basajabalaba to refund 169 billion shillings meant for a market has been adjourned for the fifth time. Basa Javala received the money as compensation from the Central Bank in 2011 following the cancellation of contracts he had entered into with the defunct Kampala City Council to own and manage Owino, Nakasero, Shauriako and Nakawa markets. In 2011, the Legal Brains Trust filed the public interest suit against Basa Javalawa and his five companies, namely Harbour Group, Victoria International Trading, the company Shila Investments, Udai International Limited, and the Merchant International Trading Company. The Legal Brains Trust argues that all the respondents facilitated the questioned 
transactions for personal gain and to the detriment of the Ghanaian citizens for whom these funds have availed the much needed medicine in rural hospitals, long awaited salary enhancement for teachers, judicial officers and other vulnerable civil servants, as well as sanitary towels for girls, among other social amenities. The petitioner therefore wants money given to Basaja Balaba's composition be paid back to the consolidated fund with an interest of thirty percent within a period of six months from the date of the rule which has been put on notice. Five justices of the Constitutional Court, led by Justice Kenneth Kakuru, yesterday adjourned the matter, saying the ruling was not ready. However, the justices did not give a date. Other justices on the panel, Chaborian Barishaki, Henobura, Stephen Musota, and Geoffrey Kiyawide. The petition was adjourned for final judgment. However, we shall give the judgment when we are fully satisfied. Kakuru said, adding that whenever they set a date for delivery of the judgment, new issues emerge and hence the delay. They've discussed the matter and we do not want to work under pressure and end up making mistakes, he added. Other respondents in the case include government institutions and officers who are sued in their individual capacities. They include Kampala City Council Authority, Attorney General Bank of Uganda and its Governor Emmanuel Tumsiwe Mutebide, former Finance Minister Saida Bumba and former Attorney General Kirdu Makuria. Also in the list of respondents are United Bank of Africa, Orient Bank, Bank of Baroda, Tropical Bank, James Segane, Ruth Kijambu, Gordon Mwesije, and Wilson Tumwine. Legal Brains Trust is also seeking a permanent injunction restraining government or any other organs, including the Bank of Uganda, from giving any money or loans without obtaining the approval of both the Auditor General and Parliament in accordance with the law. Court documents indicate that between January 2000 and December 2011, Basaja Balaba and his companies entered into contracts with KCC to manage, own, and redevelop city markets, but the contracts were reportedly entered without the advice of the Attorney General. This prompted the traders to protest, leading to the cancellation of the contracts, compelling Basaja Balaba to appeal to President Museveni, who referred the matter to the Attorney General. Thereafter, an evaluation committee was set up to review the Harbour Group's Claim and it recommended a compensation of 54.7 billion shillings, which Basara Jabalaba refused. However, then Attorney General Makubia proposed a payment of compensation of 142.7 billion shillings and another 29.9 billion shillings in respect of Nakawa market. This prompted Bumba Finance Minister to write to the Bank of Uganda requesting the central bank to help raise credit for Basara Jabalaba company. Story compiled by Michael Deng and Barbara Kawahumza for New Vision TV. This after Venoms were eliminated from the ongoing Stanbic Uganda Cup by Kajansi United at Matasa 2 Stadium in Wankulukuku. The decision was confirmed by the club website. Vipers Sports Club announces the head coach Edward Golol and his entire technical team has been relieved of their duties with immediate effect. According to the club website, the caretaker technical team will be appointed until the end of the current season as the club looks forward to recruiting a new full-time head coach. This is not the first time Golol is sacked from Vipers. He's been currently serving his third stint at the club. In July last year, Golol returned to the club for his third stint at the helm, having served as an assistant coach coach to Portuguese tactician Miguel da Costa and Kenyan Michael Nam Uma. He had also served as the club coach between 2009-2011 and 2014-2015. Goya replaced Uma, whose six-month contract expired in June 2019, was not renewed. The SAC technical team members include Ram Nyakana Mpunga, Edward Sali, Matthias Kasaga, and Moses Oloya as goalkeeping coach, who was also reappointed last year. Goya left the Venoms in the first position in the Star Times Uganda Premier League log with four points clear ahead of the second placed KCCFC. Story by Patricia Tuyahewa for New Vision TV. That brings us to the end of tonight's bulletin. You've been very good viewers. If you have any reviews or any comments about anything we've talked about tonight, you can share with us on our social media, on our social media platforms. But before we leave, we're going to leave you with a fact file to give you more insight of what's trending.